Hey guys, and welcome back to uh, this week's replay roundup. And today we're going to be taking a look at a uh, nice little Cromwell replay here, sent in by none other than Effin Bam, one of my moderators and really cool twi Twitch streamer and uh, personal friend of mine. And he sent this in, and all he said was, "I ducked at the be beginning of the the replay, at uh, the beginning of the match, because he forgot how to use the zoom function on his optics." So. Um, Let's see how well he does, shall we? I think this should be fun. Now, he is rolling up on the A cap, which is the south side of the spawn, which is really smart because if you can capture and secure the A spot, you've got all the flank, all the, the shots in the universe right into B, the road going into B, the bridge going into B, um, B would literally become your kill zone, uh, which means you can then have maybe a couple of light tanks, Blitzkrieg into B, capture B, and then you can rinse and repeat and shoot down into Charlie. Um, downside is if the enemy capture A, they're going to hold B at the same time, which means C will be your main cap and it will be a struggle to even hold Charlie. So. Let's let's keep going, shall we? Let's see see what we're, we're going. Okay, so he's gone ahead and captured Alpha. There's a Stug 3A up on the the hill. He's got a nasty howitzer that's known for rupturing ammo racks. So we want to keep our our gun mounted to him. Now, here's here's something that I, I I want you guys to actually understand. Notice what he's doing. He's doing a, a, a tactic very similar to what people do in World of Tanks. He's actually using the undulation of the hill to help offset angle his armor on his very bouncy mantlet as it is. And he, he's literally using the gun's traverse to shoot. Uh, the only way I can describe it is hiding behind boxes and sticking a gun up and shooting above your head. Um, a tactic that you can actually do, ironically, in um, several first-person shooters. But... Uh, Let's get back. Okay, we've got a Crusader Mark III trying to flank. His first shot hits the barrel of that Stug 3A. Stug 3A's shot, as you can clearly see, hits the mantlet here and does nothing. So, he sees the Crusader Mark III. Side on armor. Crusader Mark III, you're a plum. His shot goes out. And right in the daddy bags. GG. He's dead. Now notice Effin did take a couple of side shots in the side from machine gun fire. That was probably ranging shots or shots from this T-17E2. Now there's a 75mm M3 tank destroyer over there that will end Effin's ticket. Nice shot. Reaches out. Now's the gunner, the radiator, the gun, and the um, turret traverse ring of that T-17. So he's obviously not going to stick around because he can't shoot, not for 10 seconds at least, fires another shot in, now's the other gun, notice he used HE to try and end it because he does have wreath in armor, Crusader Mark III here pushing up, going for the ramp, oh good shot, shrapnels in kills the guy, Crusader Mark III who tried to go for the ram, taken out by the 3 inch gun carrier to his right, that 75mm M3 still there, takes a shot and derps it into the ground. Again, artillery coming in now with some sh with some arty shots. Tries to take another pot shot at that Stug, misses. Stug in return, misses. Again, side shot in there, looks like it's from the Crusader Mark II. M3 still going, good shot into the ammo rack at that Stug 3A. More artillery coming in in his position. He's got to move. Another shot. Ricochets off the gun mantlet of that Stug 3. Stug 3's in a good hold down position. But that artillery's starting to get real close now. Effin's either got to move or he's as good as dead. So, 
One last shot. Where does it go? Oh, right in the sides. Ammo, radiator, engine, tracks. Nice. That Stug's not going anywhere. Another shot into this to his right side from that Crusader Mark II. He's got to move. Now the artillery is coming in. It's nailing him hard. This is a little tank that could. He's in a really good position, guys. Trust me, if you just, just wow, you know, the amount of damage this guy soaked up. Another shot, finally pierces the mantle, nails the gunner and the commander, and moderately damages the gun. It's not going to stop the Stug 3A from firing again. Let's see. Effin rolls back a little. Again, he's, he's popping up, shooting, popping back down. You know, there's an M3A1 back there. Friendly plane dopes himself into the ground. Gets a shot off on that M3. Now Zim in his engine, his commander, uh, his ammo rack, and destroys his radiator. That 75mm M3, if I was him, if I was that 75mm M3, let's take a look at it from his position real quick. Right there, Effin's such a large target, but his engine's done, he's on fire, and there he goes. So, again, hindsight is 50-50. Let's go back to Effin. If I can find him in the list, there he is. Now that that M3 is dead, there's no real guns up here except for the assault gun that can take care of him. Nice shot right through the mantlet of that M3. Now's the gun. The gun, the, 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 the gun's destroyed, the gun, the, the loader's dead, and the barrel's moderately damaged. And there he goes, he finishes off the crew with a nice healthy fire afterwards. Looks like he did take a penetrating shot. shot. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see where it went. Um, probably in the side gusset plate here, because it, it's nailed his, wounded his commander and d destroyed his... Uh, obstacle device now he calls in a Junker 88 he's rolled back behind the hill so he's safe from cover now he knows that there's a whole bunch of tanks up on that hill he's spotted them throughout the rest of the entire match no spaa's coming in so oh, there's an spaa right there but he's too busy moving it's an m13 couple of bombs one two three four four drops three tanks one two three and what does he get nice little triple kill five kills now sees a uh tetriarch unfortunately trees clip his wing and he's down now he's back in his tank he knows that that hill hilltop's been cleared he knows that there's no enemies to his left to his right so now it's safe to charge, and this is exactly what the, a, a, the, the Cromwell A does. It charges. There's that SPAA we spotted earlier, hiding behind the hill. He's got problems of his own, but Effin's like, you know what? I'm in the mood for snacking on a M13. Now he knows that the M13, if it does have the uh, AP IP ammo, it can penetrate his armor from the sides. I'll have a hard time penetrating his gun mantlet, but it can penetrate his side armor. Sees him. He's on the run. He's moving. He's driving backwards. First shot, dops, does nothing. Effin starts lighting him up with his machine gun fire. Hopefully knocking out a gunner, and then finishes him off with a HE blast. Right there. Reloads back to APCR. Sees a Tetriarch Mark 1 at 12 o'clock. Starts on Tetrarch Mark 1 does have a gun that can punch into his armor. Stops right through the man. It pineapples right through the tank, killing all three crew. Mercy kill right there. Causing an artillery strike. Mostly to soften up that Panzer 2E. Panzer 2E doesn't stand a chance. Right through the top of the turret, killing the commander, destroying the gun. Friendlies are now rolling in. They smell blood in the water. Just like a whole bunch of sharks. And Effin starting to roll forward. Crests the hill. Oh shit. M3 lead. Big gun, big gun, big gun. Shoots, damages the barrel. Uses his machine gun to test. Oh shit, he's not there. He's flying. Next shot. Now him in his ammo rack and his engine. He's on fire. Still flying his plane, so he's oblivious to the fact that his tank's getting destroyed. 
Everything goes in for the ram, fails to kill. But, lo and look, there's an M2. First shot, grapes just nicely, killing the commander, wounding the driver and the, the loader. Next shot, wounds the, dry, the, the, the loader, take care of the engine, damages the ammo rack and radiator. Next shot, bust through, damage the ammo rack and transmission. Last but not least, finishes him off, kills the last crew member. Moves forward, Fak Panzer 1 dead ahead. Fak Panzer 1 really can't do that much damage. Right in the engine bay, sets him on fire, critical, boom, gone. And that's it. Now, notice the friendly Ki 49i. Notice that there is no enemy tanks around Effin. The Kowal, you're an idiot. Because watch this. He purposely drops his bombs on Effin because apparently he was pissed that Effin knew what to do. So he purposely team killed Effin. And, well, that's all she wrote because that was the end of the match. That was the last set of tanks. And they ran out of uh, combat units, as you can see. Two, one, and that's that, as they say. So I'll see you in the next replay, my friends. Hi guys, and welcome to part two of this very lengthy replay roundup. Today's this replay was sent in by none other than Dust David Games, aka DDG, good friend of mine, and uh, all around awesome guy. He sent me in a Korean War game where he's using the Soviet IL-28, along with a couple of people who aren't platooned up with him, uh, two other guys in IL-28, a couple of MiG-15s. So he said, uh, this is an interesting replay. Uh, he is a bomber, so he's going to be going for designating mostly the ground targets. So I will be speeding this replay up a little bit. But uh, he said there was a surprise at the end. So uh, I'm going to leave, uh, uh, again, I'm going to speed this up just a wee bit. Okay, so we're at eight times speed right now. And his exact words was, wait for the ending. So the flat com comes in from the uh, AAA out by the, the airfield. No damage. Let's see. David has dropped his bombs. Bridge is now gone. There's a Canberra to the left. So we're going to slow this down now because there's some enemy planes. We still at point two. Canberra. Ooh, Beast 57 went down. Canberra's got... An IL-28, a MiG-17, and a MiG-15 on his tail. Oh, he snapped his wing. Did he? No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. He did a fake stall out. Oh, he shook him off with a fake stall out. Nice maneuver. It looks like David's heading back to base to rearm, which he is. Notice how he's tree-topping right here. Tree-topping like a boss. Now, let's see how he does his landings. Comes in at a nice shallow angle, throttling down. Lands just beautifully. Starts to fire to slow himself down. Applies his brakes and then turns. Smart maneuver. Smart. He pit maneuvers himself, basically. Enemy F F86A coming in, but he's got a MiG 15 problem, so he ain't going to be a bit of an issue. So we'll speed this, re this resupply up. Resupply is done. Now he's going to be getting into the air now. Um, of course, the IL-28 does need a lengthy runway to take off because she is a bit of a heavy plane, even though that the fact that her jet engines are, were designed for planes double her size. So she's got almost double the horsepower per, per, plane, per ton, basically. Friendly IL-28 flying overhead, probably landing, going to land a rearm. Now again, he's treetopping here like a boss. Notice... Bombers, take a hint on this. Watch what he's doing. He's using the lower ground cover because he knows that if there's any fighters, they're going to be up high trying to uh, uh, look for bombers that are going to be doing high altitude bomb drops. Oh, he turns a little bit too hard there and takes off his flaps by the looks of things. It's not damaging his flight model, although it should, but it's not. So he's lost his right wing flaps there, accidentally. So we're gonna again notice how he's just tree topping, guys. He's just tree topping. 
doing about 430-ish miles per hour. So that's pretty fast for treetopping here. Uh, that's like basically he's doing what I like to call a beggar's canyon run. And if you're a Star, Star Wars fan, you'll know what the beggar's canyon run is. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's looking at the ground targets. He's realizing, wait a minute, I've got to go for these ground targets. So he's waiting and he's waiting and he's waiting. Notice that he's just already been damaged because him and this other IL-28 apparently have been double teaming them. Bombs out. Good bomb. Good bomb. Bang on target. So let's speed it back up to his runway home. Again, treetopping like a boss. Treetopping like a boss. Literally, I can't fault him here. His tactics are flaw flawless. Although, I would be careful with the, the flaps next time. There, he, he, he does what's known as a zigzag to bleed off a little bit of speed. Comes into land. Nice shallow angle. Rear wheels down first. Nicely done. Towed it and scrape. Notice now he's, he's just uh, tapping the brakes. He's not holding them like a madman. And he pit maneuvers again to slow down. Nicely done. So we're going to speed on the rearming process and the takeoff. Again, this is this replay is sped up, guys. So don't worry. This isn't exactly how fast this jet is. Okay. So we're going to... Again, he's treetopping like a boss. And let's see. Where are we going to go? Where is he going to go? Now, this is the regular speed. This is the actual. This is how slow the plane actually appears. But it's not, it's not slow in, in game at all. So we're going to speed it up to four times. Again, he's treetopping like a boss. Notice how now he's learned from his mistake. Now, again, right here, he's beggars canyoning. Notice how he's using the canyons and the tree lines to break himself up. There's a F2H Panther over there. So he's got to be careful, but it's got MiG-17 on his tail. So, again, he's coming around. He's coming around. Now, um, I haven't read chat or anything. And it doesn't look like they were talking in chat. Or if they were, the chat wasn't saved in this replay, sadly. So, again, what we're doing is, again, he's treetopping like a boss. He's trying not to silhouette himself. He's, the sun is to his back. So, he's got to be careful now. Because the sun's to his back, there could be an enemy fighter up in that clouds using the sun to blind his tail gunner so his tail gunner's not going to see the guy until it's too late. So that's one of the things you've got to pay attention to, guys, especially in simulator and realistic, is where the sun is at. Because you can get sun blind or snow blinded even on some snow maps. So there's his bombing, there's his ground target. Ground target just got hit. Oh, oh, oh. We've got a smoking wreck there or something. I'm not sure what it is. David drops his bombs. Good drop. Mission complete. And right there, he sees an enemy plane. And he gets a pilot kill. Oh, victory barrel roll. It's over. They're out of tickets. Oh, my God. David, that was awesome, man. Right at the end. You did. That was that was adding insult to injury, guys. Oh dear lord! Again, guys, if you're ever in a realistic game, and as you can see, the game what the game was realistic. Uh, uh, as you can see, the realistic battles. It was a realistic battle, guys. If you're even a bomber like that, try that tactic. I'm not saying do it all the time. I'm just saying try that tactic. You know. Uh, when I do realistic with my Wellingtons and my friends, we usually we we usually do it uh, uh, on the the C maps, and we we usually you know take torpedoes and have fun doing torpedo runs on, on on battleships, and so yeah, that's usually suicide. But you know, it's all in good taste. So uh, yeah, guys, I'll see you in the <laughs> in the next replay, which is going to be from uh, Fud Cannon, another friend of mine. So uh, I'll see you in that replay. Hi guys, and welcome back to part three of this big replay roundup. We've already seen Effing Bam, and we've already seen DDG, and now we're seeing my good friend, Fud Cannon. And today, Fud is going to be flying in his P-47 D-28. And so, let's, the sh let, let's let the show begin, shall we? Okay, so we've got a Bowfighter, a Spitfire, Yak-1, F-4U Corsair, MiG-3, BF-109... P-47 down, you know, right in front of him. 
friendly P26, P4. Oh, P26, you are so out tiered here. Lots of ground fire going off. Okay, there's a MiG-3 trying to ice. He's isolating himself. Uh, I would, I would go for. The, oh, actually, I would go for the 109 if it was me. But apparently, he's not going for the 109. It looks like he's going for this bow fighter right down at his tw at his 12 o'clock low. Uh, there's an enemy P-38N coming in high, and a P-38G. Again, it looks like FUD really hasn't been paying attention to, to you know, to previous replays. Uh, rule of thumb, guys, always keep an eye on your six more than the target in front of you, especially in, in something like Arcade where, where the flight models are extremely generous to all planes, especially the accuracy. And so FUD's going to be coming in. Let's see, I've got to... Let's see. There's both fighters not taking care. There's that P-38 trying to get a couple of shots in. Okay, FUD's already knocked the gunner unconscious on that bow fighter. A couple of more light damaging shots. Again, now FUD's getting shot from that P-39. Oh, FUD's engine's hurt bad. Again, his target fixated on this broken fighter. I, would, I understand why it is a broken fighter um, or a bow fighter, but that P-39 is just going to rip him to shreds if he does this, if he sticks to it. Does a nice little corkscrew maneuver to try and get away. Uh, the P P-47 will outturn the, P the P-39. Uh, he's going for a Junker 88. Nails the Junker 88. Nicely done. That, But that P-39's got his cannons reloaded now. And it looks like a MiG-315 is getting involved here again. And the, oh, the Bowfire took a swipe too. Looks like FUD's in a world of hurt here. Let's see. Uh, that MiG-315 is going to try and take a couple of pot shots at him. Misses with his, the, his uh, sevens. Let's see. Does he get in with his twelves? A couple of twelve cows coming in. Oh! Both fighter went low. Oh no, FUD's on fire. Let's see. Uh, P-47, I believe, did have a self-sealing gas tank. Just let's see how long it's going to take to reseal. P-49 overshot him. A couple of more minor shots into that bow fighter. He's down, he's down, he's down. But he doesn't realize it. It doesn't look now he does. Oh look, there's the Aero Cobra. Couple of shots, couple of shots. Can he get him? Can he get him? Oh, good kill there, FUD. BF-109 down low. Ah, just overshot him a little bit. Couple of more pine, minor pot shots. Got him. Can he pull up? Oh, no. He lost his tail surfaces. Right near the end. Ah, nuts. Still, it was a good run in that, P4, in that P-47. Now, let's see. What else is he going to fly out? He's already gotten three kills. Ah, the lightning. Nice. Let's see. What's his target for priority? Ah. I would look at maybe going for that uh, B-25 right there. Up at uh, his 2 o'clock. Uh, looks like he's found a different target. Or he's just waiting. Uh, let's see what else. There's a P-38 coming up at his 4 o'clock. Oh, Yak-9 down low. Isolated. No one guarding him. I'll take a swipe at him. His target fixated on the F2A, which he's about to do. Oh, no, they collided. Oh, well, tail up. Oh, shit, Spitfire. Danger close, danger close to 2B. Yeah, he's got some serious weapons. He can take care of you. I wouldn't scissor like... I, I wouldn't have scissored or corkscrewed like that. He's going to barrel loop up. I would nose down immediately. Right there. Dive, get some speed. Another P-38. There's a P-38E. Uh, again, he's going for that other P-38. Where's that Spitfire? Where's that Spitfire? He's right there above him. And a Typhoon Mark 1A. Oh, shit. That's not good. Couple of blind shots. Oh, and he nails that P-38. Good kill. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, shoot. Minor, minor sparks there. He's got to be careful. He's got to be careful. Careful. He's going to... Is he going to... Yeah, he's canyon hugging. Nice move. Nice move. Now he's got three enemies on his tail. He's got a Hurricane Mark II, Spitfire Mark IIb, and a Typhoon Mark IA. Let's see. Let's see. He's got, he's got friendlies as well behind him. So maybe if he can stretch it out a little. What does he see? Oh, he sees a Junker 87. Does he get it? Does he get it? Nice. Got a Junker 87. Hugs the Crack Canyon. They're still on his tail. Hurricane Mark IV broke off. It was a Mark IV. Sorry, not a Mark II. Um... Again, hugging those canyons, hugging the canyon walls. Oh, Spitfire's down, but that Typhoon's still there. 
Typhoon's still dangerous. That Typhoon is seriously dangerous. Now, is he going to scissor? Is he going to... No, he's not. He's just going to do a straight... Oh, some mi more minor sparks. Comes around. Sees that Hurricane Mark IV. Oh, he's starting to take some serious fuselage damage now. Yak-7B right behind him. This isn't good. Oh, and an LA-5F. Oh, no, he's on fire now. This isn't cool. Can he get that Mark IV? Can he get the Mark IV? Mark IV's down, but it's too late. Yak-7B, like the twat he is, goes ahead with the ram and kills himself. Seriously, LGC, go, go. You need to go back to fucking tier ones, my friend. Ramming is not bloody cool. Plain and simple, rule one, ramming is not cool. So, what's he going to take out now? Now, bear in mind, he's now got six kills and only two deaths. That's, a, that's not a bad little score for arcade. Oh, he's taking the P51 out with the four Haspen Enzo can, 20 mils. Are they 20s or 40s? I think they're 20s. Yeah, they're 20 mils. This was a hybrid plane designed by the, the British RAF and the American Air Force. America supplied the chassis. Britain just supplied the cannons. Let's see, what's he going for? Is he going for that SB-2M? Eh, doesn't look like it. Uh, he may be looking for some stragglers. I would be looking for... That's a, that is a furball right there, my friend, that you do not want to get in. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a Spitfire over there. Right, something's piqued his interest. I think it's a SB2M. It could be that SB2M. Is that SB2M? No, no, it's not the SB2M. But something's piquing his interest. B25, maybe? He is. I mean, he is gaining on it. B25 is coming to him. No. Oh, 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 oh broken fire. Broken fire. Couple of shots, couple of shots. Oh, broken fire. Nails him in his engines. This isn't good. This is not good. He's leaking oil and coolant. This is not good. Not good at all. Looks like his engine's about to seize. It's red, it's red, it's red. And yep, it's seized. He's out of oil completely. And he's now out of cool. Oh, he's managed to refire it up. If you tap your I key or hold it down, you can sometimes refire up the engine for a brief amount of time. Um... It does extend the repair repair bill and repair times uh, if you do manage to make it home. But but again, it's enough usually to get you home sometimes. Now, looks like he's going to try and land. He is. Let's try and speed this up a wee bit. It's, his control surfaces are fine. Okay, he's firing to, to slow himself down a wee bit. Yeah, his engine's completely gone now. Does he land? Does he land? He does. Nice safe landing. What is he doing? What is he? Oh no! Oh, he overcorrected and buried his wing. Oh no! I feel your pain, man. I've done that mistake myself. Does he repair? No, nope, vehicle lost. Okay. Let's see what's the next plane he takes out. So he's six and three. It's still still a two to one ratio. Ah, now we're talking. Cobra. Now, okay, there's a Corsair. Being chased by a 109. Corsair can easily outmaneuver the 109. P40. Friendly A20G. With a, yeah, A20G. He's going to go for the Corsair. Couple of bursts. What does he do? Oh, nice. Pilot snipe. Nicely done. So that's his seventh kill. Ooh, P400 down low there, chasing after an Aero Cobra. Going on. Oh, no, no. No, lag three got him. Nice kill. Nice kill. Readjust is his course. I would be checking my six. My you know, my, my six vertical and my six horizontal. Again, it's one thing people don't check is their horizontal and their vertical. You always want to check both. Uh, bear in mind the engine on this plane is in the center of the plane. So you can go head to head without fear of your engine getting hit. Uh, you just can't get anything on your tail. Or your sides because they'll wreck your engine. Let's see, uh, what's uh, the Duo 17 B25? Uh, Corsair down low, same guy. Uh, lag 3. Uh, I'd be careful. Uh, let's see, checking his 6. Oh shit, that's oh, an SB2M. Okay. So stay up high a little bit. There's a Yak 1 coming in. But uh, I think he's going for that. No, 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 yet. Yak 1's going for the uh, Catalina. Catalina's got his own problems. Yep, Catalina's now gone. 
Okay, Yak's coming in now. Yak one, Yak one coming in. Couple of shots, couple of shots. Breaks off, breaks off. Breaks off, turns around. Corkscrew, corkscrew turns, nicely done. Nice corkscrew turn. Yak one's not even bothering. Yak one's gonna try and use some speed to get away, but it's too late because he's built the speed in the corkscrew. Couple of minor shots at this uh, Yak one. Is he gonna get him? I, I I would fire my 50 cals and then save the 37s when you for from like maybe this this sort of. That only gets him nicely done, nicely done. And I I honestly would save the uh, 37 mils. Oh, Spitfire Mark one on his tail. Sneaky bastard. Nice, nice, nice maneuvering, nice maneuvering, nice maneuvering. Notice how he's not doing sharp turns. He's trying to keep his speed. He's doing sweeping curves. He's trying to keep his speed. Spitfire Mark 1A is determined to get him. He, he, he's target fixated. Stupid mistake there. Let's see. Oh, he's going for a B25. Nice, down below. Two birds, one stone. He's distracting a poor little Spitfire Mark 1. And he's lined up on that B25 now. Is he going to get him? Is he going to get him? Nope, nope. Nice counter turn here, but it's too late. It's over. Spitfire can't can't match him. So the Spitfire overshoots, tries to stay level, but it's too late. It's over. FUD wins. Seven kills. Four, uh, uh, what was his end tally? Uh, three deaths, eight kills. That is absolutely fucking amazing, FUD. Jesus bloody Christ, man. I do like it. Yes, it was arcade. Yes, it was a quick battle, but you know what? Doesn't bloody matter. You want to know why? Because look at that. Literally, just as the replay says, not a single fuck was given, and it shows. You know what, Thud? That was awesome, man. Thank you guys for watching this replay roundup. If you're interested in sending me a replay for War Thunder for me to check out, please send it to either deceptivecobras at gmail.com or replayroundup at gmail.com. The email addresses will be in the video description down below. I am, of course, Danny Deceptive Cobras Monahan. You have just watched the replay roundup. The very first replay roundup, I might add, for 2016. So stick around for more replays. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. Until then, guys, take care, and I'll see you all on the far side, my friends. Cornering around. Of course, the biggest weakness is the upper, ma uh, uh, the upper uh, uh, chassis, with it only being 16mm. So you've got to be careful of artillery, even light artillery. Will will wreck you. You have to be careful of HE as well, because HE will wreck you. Um, this isn't spaced armor, unfortunately. So don't give your opponents your sides if you if you can't you know if you can't help it. Same as the turret. Turret's not really that strong, but it does have some sort of angling to it, 25 degree angling. So you know, unless you're going down the hill with you know.